good evening. Welcome to Source 16 News at 10. I'm Tammy Hancock. Well, the Christian County Board of Education showed their support for the Christian County High School site-based decision-making council tonight. During a special call meeting, the board took action regarding the appeal of the commissioner's action to disband the CCHS SBD MC. I make a motion that the Christian County Board of Education appeals to the State Board of Education the commissioner's decision to disband the Christian County High School site-based council and requests an immediate reversal of the commissioner's actions. We further direct our attorney to act on this matter no later than March the 8th, 2011. Within the, within the required deadline. Yes, right. The motion was passed 5 to 0. Board members then heard Superintendent Brady Link and Assistant Superintendents Rem Watson and Janie Tomek address the four deficiencies outlined in the district leadership assessment report. When it came to Link, talking about it is the responsibility of the board, principals, and teachers to work together to get closer to a common vision. The discussion got a little heated at one point. If it wasn't for the kids, we wouldn't be here. Well, I think one of the things that says all through this, we need to develop a student-centered vision. And Absolutely. that's what we're trying to do. Kids. And then... I think Mr. Watson said something about having pointed discussions. We can get pointed real fast. When the superintendent endorses what the commissioner says about our council and he's got a 5-0 vote appealing it, our vision the same? I, always say that's, I didn't want to bring it up, but since he wanted a pointed discussion, I'll give you a pointed discussion. Well, Mr. Bell, I want you to know that I make you very aware of where I stood. Right. But if that's what you want to talk about, we will. But my thing is we're, we want to get about the vision and about kids. It has to start with you and the board, and we've got to get on the same page. And I'm willing to work to try to get that done. To address some of the deficiencies, Link asked board members for suggestions, which included workshops, retreats, urgency, parent and society responsibilities, communicating with the public, working with leadership teams, informing the site-based decision-making councils about assessments, training for the councils, and providing teachers with mentors. Meanwhile, the Christian County High School site-based decision-making council canceled their meeting tonight. The meeting was canceled because it was not conducted according to the site-based council's bylaws. Christian County High School Principal Kathy Johnson explains the council's bylaws. According to the bylaws, it states that you have to have a signed notice that states the date, time, and place. And I think we had the date, time, and place. We don't have a signed agenda, and it has the majority has to say that they have called the meeting and prepared the agenda. The council refused to sign the agenda because they did not participate in forming the agenda, which was prepared by an attorney. The special called meeting was rescheduled for Monday, March 7th at 430. In other news, Kentucky will be seeing changes in sentencing for first and second time drug offenders soon. Today, Governor Steve Bashir signed House Bill 463 into law, which will provide treatment rather than punishment for drug offenders across the Commonwealth. But under the new law, treatment programs like the Phoenix Recovery Center that already exists in the Christian County Jail will take a hard hit. Source 16's Michelle Heron has more. Of addiction is a lifelong battle. A majority of inmates involved in drug crimes are more likely to become repeat offenders if they don't learn how to live a clean and sober lifestyle. The Phoenix Recovery Center, which is operated by the Penny Royal Center at the Christian County Jail, provides treatment to these inmates rather than punishment. We use cognitive behavioral therapy. We use uh, criminal thinking errors. They are involved in uh, group dynamics on a daily basis. They have large group community meetings, they have smaller group community meetings. We do utilize the 12-step model, so it's a, it's a vast approach at trying to cure or, or at least get you to recover from the disease of addiction. But most of Kentucky's county jails were designed to house nonviolent Class D inmates. The ones House Bill 463 almost specifically targets, meaning a loss in revenue for county jails. Christian County Jailer Brad Boyd has been working with local state representative John Tilley of Hopkinsville, who sponsored the bill, about ways to overcome the loss in revenue. Your, your inmates that have more time, uh, 
those that have a little bit stiffer penalties or stiffer charges uh, than maybe those that are serving five to ten years. Uh, and then also there are some things in 463 that in the original language when the bill was first introduced uh, had been changed, uh, again, to help the, the county jails that are housing these state inmates to keep from losing as much revenue and maybe recouping some of what we were, were going to lose as a result of it. Addiction isn't something that can be cured overnight. The Phoenix Recovery Center is just one way these inmates can enjoy life again one day at a time. Michelle Heron, Source 16 News. Now, studies have shown inmates that go through the Phoenix Recovery Center are 11 times less likely to become a repeat offender. Kentucky's coal industry was a hot topic at Austin P. State University last night. The university featured a lecture from environmental lawyer Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as a part of the Student Affairs Unity celebration. The popular attorney recently filed multiple lawsuits against Kentucky coal companies, alleging they have broken federal laws for the past 15 years by producing fictitious documents. In fact, they were lying so blatantly that they, um, they made out one form many years ago that was their weekly discharge monitoring report. And instead of even bothering to make up new numbers, they just took that form and Xeroxed it every month and changed the date on it and then handed it in to the state regulators. If the industry was to be shut down, Kennedy suggested the wind industry could be an alternative for lost coal mining jobs. So, and there's more people today employed in the wind industry. There's 86,000 people employed in the wind industry than coal, and there's great wind in Kentucky. There's great alternatives in Kentucky. Kentucky is at the, it's the center um, of, of our national transportation system. Kennedy is the senior attorney for the Natural Resources Defense Council and clinical professor and supervising attorney at Pace University School of Law's Environmental Litigation Clinic. He is also the author of the New York Times bestseller, Crimes Against Nature. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. today, Kentucky Senators Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul introduced legislation to protect Kentucky's coal miners from an overreaching environmental protection agency and its war on coal. McConnell explained to the Senate what the Mining Jobs Protection Act legislation will do. This bill will tell EPA to use it or lose it when deciding whether to invoke its veto authority of a 404, 404 permit within a reasonable time frame, giving permit applications the certainty they need to do business. The bill would ensure that all 404 permits move forward to be either approved or rejected so applicants aren't left in limbo unsure how to act. The bill also ensures that EPA cannot use its veto retroactively. While being fair to permit applicants, the bill still preserves the EPA's full authority to protect human health and the environment. In addition, McConnell pointed out that coal is an enormously vital sector of Kentucky's economy with more than 200,000 jobs depending on coal including the jobs of about 18,000 coal miners. He also stated, quote, coal is a tremendously important resource to our country as well because half the country's electricity comes from coal. The legislation is also co-sponsored by Republican Senator Jim Inhofe of Oklahoma. A Hopkinsville man charged with the murder of a 50-year-old woman this week was arraigned in court yesterday. Court records indicate that 44-year-old Tramel Jerome Smith entered a not guilty plea to the murder charge in Christian County District Court. Smith, a temporary factory worker, was arrested by Hopkinsville police Tuesday in connection to the death of 50-year-old Susan James of Hopkinsville, whose partially clothed body was found lying on the side of Christian Quarry Road off East 9th Street around 6.30 that morning. Police reported that Smith admitted to being with James Monday evening, and according to investigators, his story didn't match up with things discovered during the investigation. At this time, according to police, they do not know the relationship between the two or a motive why Smith allegedly killed James. A Kentucky death row inmate wants his conviction and sentence to be overturned, claiming jurors were biased in his case. William Eugene Thompson filed an appeal in the U.S. District Court in Louisville yesterday saying jurors were exposed to news of a Florida man that was paroled from a California prison after serving time for a violent crime. Thompson is appealing his conviction and death sentence handed down in 1998 for the 1986 murder of Graves County Correctional Officer Fred Cash at the Western Kentucky Farm Center in Lyon County. 
At the time of the correctional officer's murder, Thompson was already serving a life sentence for a 1972 murder for hire in Pike County. A house in Trigg County was damaged by fire last night. Katie's Fire Department Chief Kerry Fowler told Source 16 that eight firefighters from his department responded to the blaze at 161 Glendale Drive in Katie's around 11 o'clock. He says an electric blanket ignited the fire at the home owned by Myrtle Hooks. According to Chief Fowler, Hooks was at home at the time of the blaze and escaped without injury. He notes firefighters were assisted by the Montgomery County Fire Department and all fire personnel cleared the scene after about three and a half hours. He once wrote, things are fun and fun is good. And it's safe to say the famous children's author Dr. Seuss had lots of fun in his lifetime. Yesterday was Dr. Theodore Seuss Geisel's 107th birthday. In honor, the Christian County Literacy Council hosted a birthday celebration where the cast of the musical Seussical gave a performance. Think about Yertle the Turtle and Horton, who hears the who, and the Grinch, whom we all read about at Christmas time. We all know and think about how much we love Dr. Seuss, and uh, it's, it's been a great gift to all of us. Seuss's books bring the kid out of everyone, which is probably why his books are so popular. The language is wonderful. His imagination is just amazing, and uh, of course the illustrations are too, so it's, he's just one of a kind. Dr. Seuss died in 1991 and has written and illustrated 44 children's books. Taking a look at Friday's Mega Millions jackpot, it's up to $105 million. And Saturday's Powerball jackpot is $25 million.